I did a nail talk video in April of 2024. It's nail talk. I developed a gel allergy, this video right here. And I received quite a few comments in that video, people that could relate to what I was experiencing. Basically, anytime that I would use gel polish, I would get like a little bubbles on my finger, really, really itchy fingers, cuticles. Mine wasn't that bad. There are stories where people, it's like unbearable. And so I wanted to talk about is the, because I've learned quite a bit since I've made that video, what the actual reason is and what you can do to mitigate it going forward or prevent it, all of that, because I think right now with the rise of doing gel yourself at home, we are seeing a lot more gel allergies, but it's not even just doing it at home because this can happen at a salon, which I will talk about. Something that I have since learned is that it is not brand specific. So in that video, I said that I got rid of my Beatles and my cheaper brands because even though they say they're hema free, which is a known allergen for a lot of people, but it is not the actual gel brand because this can happen with really expensive brands as well. And I wrote down some notes so that my thoughts are more, a little bit more cohesive. But the culprit essentially for contact dermatitis, which is what people are experiencing when they experience a gel allergy on their skin. It could also happen, by the way, on the face. Like some people will get like really swollen eyes and eyelids and stuff. So contact dermatitis is an immune reaction to certain ingredients in gel and nail products, specifically acrylates and methac methacrylates, which is what you find in gel. So HEMA is a known allergen to cause gel reaction in nail products. It can be highly sensitizing meaning it can trigger allergic reactions in some people, especially with repeated exposure. If the gel doesn't cure fully, which gel doesn't ever fully, fully cure, I believe, but properly cure, either you're using layers that are too thick, so the top layer will look cured, but then if you file it off you, and the underneath layers are gooey, like they're not hard, that means it wasn't fully cured, especially with dark colors. This is very true with dark colors. Because it's not cured properly, some of these actives remain in their uncured active form. And this is also true if you get uncured gel on your skin. It can lead to sensitization where the immune system begins to recognize this as a threat. That's the best way that I kind of understood it. So whether you're doing layers that are too thick, you're getting it on the skin, the uncured gel on the skin, and constant exposures, and everybody's different, keep in mind. Some people, it will take just a couple times. For some people, it could be years. For me, it was years and years. My body formed a reaction to it, and I would get really, really itchy bumps on my fingers. My cuticles would be so itchy. And once you are sensitized, any amount can trigger this reaction. This is what I wanted to bring up because a lot of people think that switching brands, getting rid of the cheaper brands, it will help them avoid this, but that's not necessarily the case. Yes, cheaper brands might have formulations that are not the best, which is why I would recommend going with higher brands, but the main thing, the main thing is definitely application and properly using gel. This is why sometimes people will go to a salon, get them done professionally, and it will still happen to them. It will be improper technique. Higher brands might have lower levels of these sensitizing chemicals, but it is still essential to minimize your exposure, and that's my cat, thank you very much, ma'am. <laughs> so if you experience itching, redness, swelling, blisters, any of that, whenever you use a gel product, you might have contact dermatitis. You might already be sensitized to it. I am still using gel products and I will share what it is that I do that still allows me to use it. If your reaction is so bad, then I would just say, you know, probably stay away from it altogether. It's not worth it. Find other things that you can do, whether it's like growing out your natural nails and keeping those. Um, some people do press on nails. Like if it's really, really, really bad. For me, it wasn't super intense, but it was super itchy and it wasn't fun, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm dying kind of thing. So what I did is I did get rid of my cheaper brands. If you are still using cheaper brands and you don't have a reaction, you should be fine so long as you're still using proper techniques. Like do not get the gel on your skin. Do not do super thick layers always always thin layers and cure each layer properly before moving on to the next one especially especially dark colors i highly recommend using a little liner brush to get her close to the cuticles and the edges so i will deposit gel polish using the gel polish bottle brush and then i'll use a liner brush dip that in and get really close to the cuticles this way i can be very very precise and i'm not getting gel on my skin and if you do get any gel on your skin i have like little wipes that i use with isopropyl alcohol and wipe it right away immediately try not to flood the cuticles but for my peace of mind i just got rid of all of my cheaper brands like beetles and stuff and it is very hard to find higher quality 
like salon quality gels that is available to the consumer a lot of them you have to be licensed to buy like you can't just go in the store and buy them there are some comments that people left left with like really good recommendations for great brands the one that i use right now is dnd some salons quite a few salons actually use dnd and they love it so that's the one that i went with because it's used in salons but it's also kind of accessible to consumers sometimes they have a five dollar gel sale so on their website i think it was like in october they had a five dollar gel sale and they bought a few gel polishes so that's the brand that i use and then i also use a builder gel called in hype but honestly here let me okay but even with that i did have a moment where i still had a little bit of itchiness because i did not apply it properly by the end of the day and into the next day my fingers did get itchy so even with like better quality brands this can still happen this is why I say technique is super important. So what I do now, like I said, is I avoid the skin. I use a little liner brush, work in thin layers, make sure you get a good lamp. This is the one that I use. It's pretty affordable. It's not like salon quality lamp, but I've been using it for the past year and it's worked well for me. Obviously there are better lamps out there. Switch out your lamps if they start to, like they, they only have a certain amount of hours that they can do. And this is my nails right now. I use an in-hype rubber base gel. And then I go in with some builder gel and I just kept it at that. I did top coat with chrome powder and some more top coat. And then all of my gel polishes, I just switched to D&D right now because that's what I can afford. That's what I have access to. And I do still like to do my own nails at home. Builder gel is my all time favorite. Just make sure that you are properly applying and using gel because the last thing that you want is to develop a gel allergy and get those reactions. So if you do have an allergy, that is just what I do. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful because I did get quite a few comments and when I made that video, I was mainly focusing on the fact that it was cheaper brands that caused my reaction, but that's just not the case. So that's what I do to still be able to use gel at home. Be safe out there, guys. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in future videos.